All right, guys, so big shifts are happening. The EU is beginning to crack when it comes to China, but the US is going to double down on their policy of containment. Now, if you watched yesterday's debate, it was downright atrocious. Now, I thought Trump was going to mop the floor with Harris. However, she actually might have won the debate. Now, don't get me wrong. Her policies are still horrible, but her performance was slightly better. But there's one consensus between them, which is the need to clobber China's economy. Chinese cars entering the US will be severely punished, and that won't change. What they have given to China is unbelievable. But we're not going to let that. We'll put tariffs on those cars so they can't come into our country. What they've done to business and manufacturing in this country is horrible. While the US will impose a 100% tariff on Chinese EVs, we have a surprise from Europe. The prospect of a Trump win and their collapsing economies is kind of making them think twice. Do we really want to break away from China and deal with an isolationist United States? Now, during the debate, Trump freaked Europe the hell out. He didn't say he wanted Ukraine to win. He would also end the war before he gets inaugurated. In a few months, Europe could be left to deal with Putin while the US retreats. They might even need to pay up for their own defense. Europe doesn't have the money, not when they're in economic decline. There's a reason why Italy's Maloney ran to China last month in August. Now it's Spain pushing back against the EU's crazy policies. Spain is the fifth biggest economy in the EU and they are breaking away from von der Leyen's plan to punish China. The Spanish don't want a trade war with Beijing. According to the readout, Spain is trying to get the EU member states to push back against the EV tariffs. We need to reconsider all of us, not only member states, but also the Commission, our position towards this movement. And this comes on the back of the Prime Minister's trip to Beijing. It's symbolic because it's talking to both EU audiences and directly to China as well. Spain is open for business with China and this is what essentially he's saying. Now all it takes is for the majority of member states, just 65% of EU's population, to vote against the measure. Then the Commission's plan to isolate Europe from Chinese EVs will collapse. So we could see a big U-turn in just a month or two. Now, why would Spain do a big shift in policy? Maybe it's because they see the complacency of EU industries and how China's overcapacity can help build up Spain's economy. Now, firstly, Spain is a huge producer of cars, but none, almost none, is a Spanish brand. Mercedes-Benz, Ford, Estelantis, they all have factories in the country. But Chinese brands are starting to take over the scene. Cherry, which is a Chinese brand, has outsold Tesla, Jeep, and Fiat in Spain. Now, they sold only 744 cars in August, but that is an incredible 8,000% increase. Chinese cars are simply superior. They can travel further and they cost significantly less. Spain can see the writing on the wall. EU cars can't compete and the crisis at Volkswagen just confirms everything. So you might as well replace these dying production plants with Chinese factories, which is exactly what they're doing. Cherry, the same automaker, has chosen Barcelona for its first electric car plant in Europe and they are pouring in 400 million euros in investment. Now what's crazy is the location. This used to be the site of the former Nissan plant after the Japanese brand left town. This will be the start of a trend whether the tariffs get dropped or not. Chinese brands will be replacing G7 automakers in Europe itself. It's going to be a free-for-all between EU members to see who can get the investments. Now, the term for crisis in Chinese is called Weiti. If you break down each character, you get the words danger and opportunity. In every crisis, there is opportunity. It's how Chinese companies think and Spain is beginning to embrace the exact same philosophy. While the rest of Europe is hammering Beijing, Spain wants to build stronger relations with China. The crazy tariff on Chinese EVs is a chance to bring in valuable technology to build Spain's manufacturing up. We are seeing a big reshuffling of industrial powers within Europe itself. Spain is the second biggest automaker in the EU. They produced nearly 2.5 million cars last year and they are ranked just below Germany. Now, if the EV trend continues, if Germany continues to deindustrialize, Spain would easily leapfrog the Germans to first place. Technology is the future and China leads the world in renewable tech. 
Now, Spain has a roadmap to cut their emissions by 25% by 2030. By working with China, they can accomplish this. The Chinese company Envision is planning a $1 billion green hydrogen park in Spain. The money is coming from China and so is the expertise to build all the fuel machines. Spain is doing something that the rest of Europe just can't seem to do, which is to think for themselves. China's rise is something that you can tap on. Because if you don't, Chinese money will just flow elsewhere to places like Southeast Asia. While some EU members are starting to break rank, the US is not going to do the same. China's rise has to be contained at all costs. Now, whether it's Republican or Democrat, this is the unwritten rule of the land. No matter who wins, the crosshairs will be on Beijing. Now, during the debate, which was an absolute disaster, Trump pledged once again to punish China. Do you believe Americans can afford higher prices because of tariffs? They're not going to have higher prices. What's going to have and who's going to have higher prices is China and all of the countries that have been ripping us off for years. I charge, I was the only president ever. China was paying us hundreds of billions of dollars and so were other countries. And you know, if she doesn't like them, they should have gone out and they should have immediately cut the tariffs. But those tariffs are there three and a half years now under their administration. I have to disagree here. Imposing tariffs were absolutely boomerang back on the American people. If the US wasn't dependent on Chinese goods, I would have agreed, but the data says otherwise. In 2022, the US imported $3.2 trillion worth of goods, of which nearly 17% came from China. A 100% tariff on everything Chinese will drop this to near zero. Even if Beijing reroutes the goods through third parties like Mexico, it will just complicate the entire supply chain. The middlemen will take their cut, and US consumers will have to pay more. Before the tariff war, China imposed an average import tax of 8% across the world. But once the Trump tariffs started, Beijing began retaliation only on the US. In fact, their tariffs to the rest of the world dropped. Within 18 months, US exports were subjected to a 21% tariff. Tariffs to the rest of the world averaged below 7%. Chinese trade actually became cheaper to the world despite US punishments. A 100% tariff is a full-blown economic war. We can expect China to retaliate hard and follow the same playbook. Zero tariffs for the global south while slapping the US with a 100% tariff as well or even more. A trade war with China won't benefit the US. They can always import more stuff from Asia or Europe while punishing US companies and exporters. And this chart says it all. Within 24 months, Chinese imports from the US collapsed by 10%. Imports from elsewhere rose by nearly 17%. There's also another side effect to consider. When Beijing buys stuff from the US, they use dollars to settle trade. If China imports goods from Southeast Asia, for example, they don't want to use dollars. They'll push for bilateral currencies like the RMB. And this will in turn ramp up the dollarization in global trade. And let's not forget about the damage of retaliation from the Chinese economy. The lobster industry in Maine is a great example. China whacked them with a 25% tariff in retaliation, and within months, the whole sector collapsed. American lobster sales crashed by 70%. China moved to import lobsters from Canada instead, which helped them to double their sales. And these are just some of the real-world consequences. Now, while Trump is all about the trade war and making them pay, Harris policies are also a big disaster. She wants to hobble China's technology and industries. Under Donald Trump's presidency, he ended up selling American chips to China to help them improve and modernize their military, basically sold us out when a policy about China should be in making sure the United States of America wins the competition for the 21st century, which means focusing on the details of what that requires, focusing on relationships with our allies, focusing on investing in American-based technology so that we win the race on AI, on quantum computing. If you think the semiconductor wars are done, it's only going to get worse. It's going to ramp up. You heard Kamala. She's going to work with the G7 to impose further restrictions and sanctions. The polls put Trump and Kamala neck to neck, 50% to Donald and 50% to Harris. Before the debate, Trump was more likely to win. But as you can see, 
the debate changed everything. Kamala didn't bomb and her performance was 100 times better than Joe Biden. So we must talk seriously about her policies. The latest breakout over China's tech comes in the form of quantum computing. The US is going to restrict the flow of chips and tech to stop Beijing's progress. Quantum will change communications and computing technology. And whoever wins this race can dominate almost every sector in the world, from defense all the way to manufacturing. We are talking about smart supply chains and the future of robotics. This is where the Chinese have the lead, thanks to Huawei 5G in China is way more advanced versus the US, and it looks to continue when it comes to the quantum field. This chart shows us the number of patents in quantum technology from each country. The quantity of research from China is just breathtaking. They have more than 6,000 patents, almost twice that of the US. The US leads in computing patents, but China has conquered quantum communications. Kamala is going to throw billions of dollars to challenge China here. She has no choice. And we all know how efficient and how effective government spending is, right? Just need to look at Intel. Trump is right in this aspect. The US simply can't manufacture anymore. President Trump, I'll let you respond. First of all, they bought their chips from Taiwan. We hardly make chips anymore because of uh, philosophies like they have and policies like they have. I don't say her because she has no policy. Everything that she believed three years ago and four years ago is out the window. The 50 billion chips act isn't going to be the end, guys. Kamala is going to borrow a ton of money and add even more burden to the federal deficit to battle China. We'll have the Chips Act 2.0, 3.0. The Treasury will be issuing bonds like there's no tomorrow. But I want to touch a bit about Kamala's policy on Ukraine. We know Trump wants to end the war ASAP, but Harris is fully committed to project Ukraine and NATO. Just listen to this. If Donald Trump were president, Putin would be sitting in Kyiv right now. And understand what that would mean, because Putin's agenda is not just about Ukraine. Understand why the European allies and our NATO allies are so thankful that you are no longer president and that we understand the importance of the greatest military alliance the world has ever known, which is NATO. It's the same old talking points from Blinken and Sullivan, but it does show US support won't stop. The money is going to continue no matter what. The US has spent over $170 billion so far. The latest package was in April when Biden pledged $61 billion to Ukraine. In a weird sense, Kamala is better for the military-industrial complex. She'll keep the gravy train going. So 2025 is going to be a disaster no matter who wins. Pick your economic apocalypse. If Trump wins, he'll ramp up deglobalization and unleash a global trade war. Not just with China, but with the whole world, including his G7 allies. NATO will have to pay their fair share for defense as well. But if Kamala wins, the semiconductor war won't end. She'll explode the national debt to the moon as well. And let's not forget about the crazy price controls. Next year is going to be really nasty. But let me know what you think. Will more EU members break away towards China? And after the horrendous debate, who's leading the elections? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.